Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test account and we're going to be checking out the event that is up with the Battle of Blood. But first of all, I wanted to look at the preference tab, guys. So they did update this with the new update that is coming. Very, very awesome to see. If you guys remember, it was a little tiny kind of frame up there in the top left. It was incredibly difficult to see exactly what you were doing, what you were looking at. So again, little quality of life improvement here. You can go through you can actually see your avatars. You can see everything here. You can see all of your frames. Um, it is awesome with the layout of this, guys. Again, to see exactly what you can use in here. Even the, the rake plates, which we, unfortunately we don't use, and then the chat bubbles, um, we don't have either because they've been super expensive to build. So definitely an update for the preference tab that is really cool with the layout. Um, little things really make the game a lot, a lot better. All right, guys, looking at the event, that is right. The Magician's Hat is up. It will be up in the next couple of days on the global servers, but we also have the Battle of Blood. Now, a lot of players love this game mode. A lot of players hate this game mode. Um, essentially, what you want to do in here is you have daily quests and you do have challenge quests. Come in here every day, guys. Get your points. Big thing with this, guys, is if you look here, you're getting red chests, you're getting engraving mats, you are also getting... <coughs> Um, some more loot out of here. You want to farm this every single day. I believe in totality you get eight days of this, guys. So, I mean, that's 16 red chests. Looking at the cost, diamond cost of those chests, it is definitely beneficial to come in here, um, pick all of those up. In addition, you do get more loot. So, you get some resource loot out of here. You get some common scrolls. And then, of course, the big thing is within the challenge. You can finish this out in one single day, guys. If you really want to go through here and just kind of grind this out, you can see it is based on the battles. It is based on points, win streaks, and then, of course, the heroes that you utilize within here are going to give you points. I did one battle this morning, but you can go through here. You can actually farm this out quite a bit. This one gives you a lot more um, loot because it is the, the overall, the, the one-time reward. So you do get some common scrolls there. Even here, guys, 24-hour resource chests, huge when it comes to getting Essence. Some more common scrolls, and then, of course, we do have Stargazer cards. This is what you really do want to farm in here. This is the part you do really want to farm in here, guys, are those 10 Stargazer cards. Anytime we can get Stargazer cards similar to Time Emblems for free, guys, that is equivalent to one full pull, which, of course, is equivalent to 5,000 diamonds, guys, if you're doing summons in there. Make sure you're coming in here, you're picking up all of the challenge events. Now, out of the challenge, guys, again, a lot of players will kind of spend some time and effort into grinding this. Overall, there isn't a huge return if you're looking to grind this. Um, I wish they had a leaderboard that offered rewards or something of that nature. So it does give you a choice um, of the heroes that you see down here. We have Joan of Arc. We have a, a couple different heroes. I'm wondering if Mulan is in here. I'm wondering if a couple other heroes in here. But you just go in here, and it's pretty cool because... You can play around with the heroes that are in here. So if you don't have all of the um, access to AFK Arena heroes, it does have a pretty good RNG factor in here, um, honestly, because a lot of the players dependent on the cards that you get. So when it comes to the, the, choice, the choice cards that you can actually get in here, um, of course, the newer heroes are going to provide... A lot more of a power aspect when it comes to this game mode specifically which is the reason why a lot of the the newer heroes um do perform a lot better in here and of course we have yennefer in here guys yennefer totally built is huge she does an incredible amount of damage in here which is why i picked her and she really does guys the the crowd control aspect that she provides also with the damage, look at that, 54, 56 billion for, or 56 million from Leica. But overall, guys, the crowd control aspect that Yennefer brings in here, very, very cool to see. Going to just run through a couple battles in here. Um, because again, the, the hero formation, um, we've done guides for these in the past. But overall, it's super dependent on who you have. The chances of you, of you having the same... Heroes. So even here, guys, we got a ton of Wilders in here. Um, but like I was saying, the, the chances of you getting a set five hero group in here is very, very minimal. Just for the simple fact that it's usually not going to happen. But of course, remembering things like faction bonuses in here, guys. Faction bonuses in this game mode particularly are pretty big. Just again, because you get such a random amount of heroes in here. 
um, which is pretty interesting to see. The Wilders, of course, we got the five pole. We have Oku in here. Heroes like Nevi, heroes like Peanut, guys. Um, when you're maxing out those heroes with the plus 60 engraving, they're almost unstoppable, guys. It is incredible the, the amount of heroes that do, again, incredibly well within this game mode, which I definitely like to see. So looking here, guys, we have Taylene, which, of course, is an old school hero. We have Damon that will work. Frampton, of course, being relatively new. I'm going to go with the Frampton. And then, of course, you can see we have Mortis, but when it comes to support, very minimal. And also remember, guys, that we get the maxed out. That, that's the other big thing to remember here, guys. So even some heroes like Gwen, um, we get Gwen completely maxed out, which can make a big difference when it comes to the viability of the heroes. Because even heroes like Mortis that we usually don't have fully, fully built, unless you're a whale, um, we do have an opportunity Valoris in here pretty strong. That is why I was going to run a couple Hypogens in here. So I'm going to drop her in. She's another hero, guys, that when it comes to the strength, when it comes to um, the build of the hero, very, very strong. When you have her built, the, the damage that she does is really high. Then, of course, we have Joan coming over. Taylene unfortunately dies, but we got Damon with a buff right there. And again, with Valoris, guys, Valoris puts out a lot of damage. But it looks like we're going to get some insta shots and we lose this one. Which is okay because literally you can just try it again and again and again. And look at that, guys. Sonia is the one who put out by far the most damage in this one. Um, followed by Rosaline. So very cool. And again, you want to hop in here. You want to do your dailies. You want to do um, the challenge or the weeklies. Just because you want to pick up the loot in here to make sure that you do get those Stargazer cards, guys. So, all right, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.